Jay McCullough reporting live. It is Sunday evening, and we had quite an eventful day. Went up to Fort Lee, had up some uh, parks up there, uh, visited Shanghai Restaurant on Main Street, got some Shao Lambo, uh, visited Tony the Wow Band. Um, always a great experience there. And on the way back, stopped by Mitsua, and uh, just to see what was in stock there. Uh, Cynthia wanted some breakfast bread, uh, as well as some uh, Spam Masubis. Um, and this tomato here is just here for focal point testing. Uh, and while we were there, as soon as you walk in, there's usually some special stuff um, available and there's always a, a big promotion or there's, um, I don't know, there's, there's, there's a lot of fanfare, I guess is the word for it. And there were some Japanese strawberries, uh, which I'd seen, uh, and tasted, um, maybe about at least 10 years ago. Um, got them sharing my family and, uh, it looked like they were in season. And what they also had, um, so that was these, uh, strawberries from Japan. Uh, we also had the, uh, Oshi berries and these are actually, uh, done in the similar style. Um, and these are actually, uh, produced uh, in vertical farms nearby. And uh, yesterday while we were in the Heights on the way back, uh, Emma needed some blueberries and strawberries. Uh, so $2 is going to be our base testing here, just some uh, generic, the ones you'll find at a grocery store, um, probably for a lot more than $2. I mean, the, the Heights, excellent fruit stands up there. I think this is from Lucky Farms um, over on maybe it was Palisade or Congress. Um, and Driscoll's is, um, I mean, Really, the, the situation with strawberries, at least in the in the past few years with the pandemic, is like strawberries are just gone to crap here. Um, maybe it's a season and stuff, but like I'm used to buying these things, and then within a day or two, they're, they're moldy. So if these make it through the week, we'll be fine. Um, but anyway, I want to do a little shootout here. Um, the Japanese strawberries and the Oshi berry, um, incredibly expensive. Uh, I'm not going to lie about that. Um, but before you waste your money on these things, um, we're just, we're just going to dive into it and then... Maybe this will help make an informed purchase later. Uh, so we're gonna start off with the Driscoll Berry here. I'm not gonna waste any time. And just gonna take a random one right there. And this is your standard standard berry. Um, not, not too ripe. Uh, these have been uh, recommended to be eating these, uh, at least the strawberry berries and the, um, sorry, the, the Japanese berries and the Oshi berries recommended to eat at room temperature. So they've been sitting out for a little bit. Uh, we did refrigerate them when we got home earlier. And we're just gonna uh, gently wash these. Uh, I don't wanna damage too much of it. Maybe it doesn't matter for the Driscoll Berry. Uh, but I just want to make sure we have a good, good base here. So there you go. We're just going to plop off these guys. And just going to take my Pampered Chef knife here from Grandpa. Excellent. And we're just going to cut this in half and just see what we're working with here. This is your standard domestic berry. This is, happens to be grown in Mexico. Sometimes they're from California. Uh, there's There's not too much going on here, and I'm not... Not hoping for anything special here, but it's sweet. It tastes like a strawberry. I mean, this is what you're gonna find in a you're making a strawberry milkshake or something that you can get this. And I think what we're missing here, what you really do want for the full panel, is maybe some some fresh South Jersey farm grown strawberries that you get in a box. And they're gonna be super tiny, maybe about this one might be the biggest one that you'd get in those kind of boxes. And those are just delicious. I would say for store-bought strawberries, these are actually really fresh. Definitely better than the stuff they're peddling at Acme for $5, uh, um, a bushel or whatever you call this, a, a pound. Um, so again, go, go to the Heights, little fruit stores, your local fruit stores, or in Hoboken, uh, maybe uh, Natural Foods, or um, maybe the Natural Basic or something over by City Hall, uh, little grocery stores and bodegas. Like that, that's if, if they have a good supply chain, they'll have well, excellent produce and vegetables there. Um, so I don't know what I'm expecting here. I mean, this is this is actually impressive for, for the stuff we've been buying from local supermarkets. So not bad at all. I'm going to move right on to the Oshi Berry. And as I mentioned, these are uh, produced in vertical farms. There's a dress on the back of this. It says Kearney, New Jersey, which I know there's a lot of vertical farms going in there with uh, lettuce hydroponics. And these are, they actually don't even say strawberry on the container. This is just said omakase berry so i don't know if that's just like ridiculous marketing i mean certainly i mean the packaging here is kind of offensive for strawberries but i understand if you're these are roughly about five dollars a berry so you want you want these to just make it in perfect shape directly to to your home or to the kitchen that you're going to be preparing these with and we're just gonna just uh, give this a wash i don't even know if that's necessary maybe they're purified from that who knows but let's just get a look at that just give it a quick dry off and it doesn't even look like a strawberry. This is some, presumably some genetic engineering going on here. And I'm just gonna cut through. I'm just get a cross section here. 
and let's get, I didn't even bother to smell it. Like when you're, when you're picking out strawberries in the supermarket, definitely give them a smell and shake, shake them around a little bit to peek in there and make sure there's no mold. But for these, um, I trusted that they're all basically equivalent. It's, I mean, it smells like a strawberry. I don't know what's going on here. This is, there's really nothing, um, nothing. I'm just going to do a little palate cleanse here with some uh, sparkling water. So make sure I'm going in, going in clean here. And, um, really, I mean, this is, this is like the Instagram of strawberries, I guess. And, um, uh, sister-in-law now Yamazaki, she actually, uh, when I, I actually first saw these in Hoboken back in November at what used to be Sabzi's produce uh, behind city hall, it's now Ma's Gourmet. And they were selling these in a little, in a little case, um, in a refrigerator, a branded refrigerator. And, uh, she had actually had these before she said, this is, this is not an everyday strawberry, certainly. Uh, even at these prices, but I mean, if you were just throwing money around, you wouldn't want to eat these. Um, you wouldn't want to eat tons of these. Um, so this is really like if you're having a nice slice of cheesecake or something, or a special dessert, uh, have one of these, or maybe slice some over it. So I'm just gonna try a little bit here, and just gonna coat off the end there. So I'm just gonna pop the whole thing in my mouth. So again, the nose. I'm not. I'm not smelling anything special here, but tasting it. That's very nice. I mean, this is. I, yeah. Okay, this is this is kind of the ideal strawberry. Um, interesting to see how it stacks up to the Japanese grown ones that were imported. Um, and this is pretty accessible in the in the New York City region. I believe they're also accessible in Los Angeles now. I mean, the mouthfeel is spectacular. It is, and I, I think that's. I, I would definitely pay attention to the container where it's like keep refrigerated but bring up to room temperature before you're enjoying them and that's probably really important you wouldn't want these really cold by the refrigerator um this is a spectacular strawberry i'm just gonna leave this here um just uh come back to that later uh and now we have the japanese strawberries and these are actually from murata uh the brand is uh murata ichigo uh ichigo just a japanese word for strawberry uh and this is from the murata farms uh they're on the east coast of japan um not too far, I guess, from the Tokyo. I don't, my Japanese geography is not great. I'm not going to lie, but um, they're not too far from uh, Tokyo. Um, and just on the coast there, um, looking from the Oshi Berries on their website, they, they mentioned that the, the best Japanese strawberries are grown in the, the Alps. And the whole benefit of their approach here is that you can have these any time of year. Uh, whereas um, we, we don't go to Mitsuba too often, uh, but definitely at various points during the year. And I will say the imported Japanese strawberries are definitely not always available. Um, and so price-wise, I mentioned with the uh, Oshi berries, you're looking at about $5 a berry here. Uh, this was um, about two-thirds of a pound for $30 for the Japanese imported strawberries. Um, so I actually say they're, they're probably cheaper um, than the Oshi berries. Uh, Oshi berries were going about like eight large berries for 50 bucks, I think. Um, so these caught my eye. These are, I am actually have more hopes for these. And this is what I believe I had, maybe not the same farm, but... Definitely the imported Japanese berries is what I had uh, many years ago. And so just to compare this, I mean, you get a much deeper red on the Japanese berry there. Uh, and this is really, maybe these are going to be more spectacular because this is really what the Oshi berry is trying to, to give you um, any time of year, um, just uh, domestically. Um, but really, just a beautiful red there that you don't really get on the Oshi berry. And I'm not going to judge a book by its cover here, uh, but let's just give this a taste. Now that is fantastic. Now I cannot, in good conscience, it'd be hard to recommend one over the other, but this is, this is a spectacular strawberry. Um, and the fact that it was made by a small family owned farm, uh, I'm sure like carbon footprint, these are probably a lot worse because I mean, they're, they're shipping them here and they are in little plastic containers like this. It's not like these, which are probably coming on big trucks. Um, if they can make it through Texas right now with Gargapit's stupidity. Um, but with the, the Japanese strawberries, I mean, these are definitely air shipped presumably picked within the within just days or uh within the past week um really an excellent strawberry here and again this is not something i would use cynthia wanted to pick up some uh, vanilla ice cream and make some shakes i said you know we have i'll use these strawberries for the shakes but i can't we're not we're not going to blow through these on shakes this is for savoring um i would say definitely oshi berry Maybe if you're doing a dinner party or something, you want to top a cake. The Japanese strawberries, these are definitely worth getting maybe once a year. Uh, if you want to treat yourself and, you know, have have one or two, 
um, share, definitely get some friends over. I mean, share it, make this an experience to share. And um, these are these are definitely worth trying. There's something something special, and that's what I did ten years ago. I brought them over by my grandparents' house, and we had them there. Um, now, in the back, you might notice we have this cake here. Um, that's going to be it for the strawberry coverage. So if that's all you came here for, then you can just tune out. But uh, Yuri Rusko, uh, it was uh, Eastern Orthodox uh, members in his family. He he made this cake, and um, granted, uh, Yuri's cakes. He's got a lot going on there. Uh, this was uh, he made like five of these things in his oven. And I think this is just one, this is a single layer of a cake, so I don't even know how he made this with this vertical. Um, but it was, he had to do a lot of practice with the icing here. This was what he would say is one of the failed attempts, but I mean, it all tastes the same. Uh, so this was a, oh, he'll have to tell me later, um, but I went into this thinking it was going to be like a very, I don't know, I had I had lower hopes, uh, or I'd say low expectations for what this was, but it was actually a very pleasant. There's some citrus in there. It looks like maybe some raisin. The icing was sweet. I don't have a sweet tooth. You might find that hard to believe, but the icing, even though he did make a bit of a mess here, lovely like citron icing, really delightful. And again, he just gave us way too much cake. We took this at a pizza party yesterday. We didn't get through it all, so we have a whole container left of it. That was delicious. And then one more thing I'm going to leave you here with. I mean, great job, Yuri, on that. Always appreciate the sweets. I will say not as good as his soups or cuddles, but... Who am I going to, we're not going to turn out cake here. And while you're up in the Heights, make sure you stop by Dolce de Leche Bakery. Really excellent stuff. I recently brought this to house party at Harry Kals's and they were just amazed at um, about the, the quality and the, the price of um, the little box of pastries that we brought. And I, I did overbuy. Um, when I went there in November, we were doing an outdoor barbecue. He's over on the the west side of Manhattan there, incredibly windy, just basically a wind tunnel there. And um, we lost a lot of the old German bakery uh, pastries, I want to say. Um, so the second time I made sure to, you know, um, keep everything on the floor ready so it didn't blow off the table. Um, and the Dolce de Leche pastries were just, they made it to the after party. Everybody loved them. And this is a, uh, Cynthia's going to have to remind me, this might be a, a cheese and guava croissant. I'm not sure if this is savory, but we'll find out in a second. You can't go wrong, I told you, Alecha, let me tell you. If you like cake, they got cakes up the wazoo. We've got sandwiches, empanadas, um, savory pastries as well. Um, so this is, there's definitely a bit of a sweetness here. I believe some cheese and maybe some guava. It's just excellent. For something that we bought yesterday, it was kept on the counter in a white paper bag. It held up marvelously, and uh, the flakiness is just spectacular. I, I guess if I put more effort in this episode, I probably would have heated it up a little bit, but I could just tell you I did. I mean, it's going to look the same anyway, um, but just trying to be honest here with you here. Um, if you make it Dolce de, Leche, Dolce de Leche Bakery, and there are also a few locations in North Bergen, so plug it into Google, see whatever's closest to you. And uh, that's going to round it out here, but you've got way too much food to enjoy. I'm going to probably pour myself a nice glass of milk uh, and settle in, and it's been three nights already. Hopefully, we're going to try and finish this damn Batman movie. It's three freaking hours long. We keep falling asleep. I had to eat pretzels just to wake myself up, those those Oots pretzels. Um, so I'm looking forward to finishing that movie today. Uh, is it Brian Patterson? Is that the guy's name? Robert, Robert Patterson. There you go. Thank you. Um, well, he's doing a great job, but it's a the movie's giving me nightmares every night. So I just I just want it to be over. But it's a good movie, so I want to finish it. Anyway, Jerry McCullough reporting live with some Dolce de Leche Bakery, um, some support Ukraine cake from Yuri, uh, happy Easter Orthodox, um, or whatever you call it, to everyone celebrating that. And uh, a bunch of strawberries here. Um, so we'll see you next time. Uh, I don't know what we'll find, but we'll get something and put it on a video for you. Take care.